Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Mystery Theory. Today, I am going to share the case that is known as the Killer Bride. It takes place in Kalispell, Montana which is a town of about 23,000 and is known as the Gateway to Glacier National Park. During the summer of 2013 is when our case takes place. Jordan Graham was a shy, introverted, and very religious 20-year-old. And she met Cody Johnson at a local church picnic. Cody was the opposite. He was very outgoing. He was social. And he was more interested in racing cars and guns. But when he met Jordan, he was instantly attracted. And the two began dating. Cody was in love soon after with Jordan. But Jordan was very cold. She didn't believe in sex before marriage. But her cold demeanor was deeper than that connection. They would never hold hands. They never look at each other in that special way. But Cody was not going to break up with Jordan. He tried very hard to win her love. Cody, in the beginning, told his mother that she was the one and that he planned to make Jordan his wife. Now, for Jordan, church was very important. So she made a point to make sure that Cody would attend church with her every Sunday. She wanted him to be a good Christian, just like her. Again, she was not very affectionate towards Cody. And after a year of dating, Cody was still insisting And he asked her to marry him. Jordan accepted and the two of them started planning their wedding. During the planning stages, Jordan was excited to plan the 
the wedding. But she didn't seem excited about being married. She would often get cold feet and she continued despite that to plan the wedding. She even told this to her friends. I'm looking forward to the wedding, but not the relationship after the wedding. On June 29, 2013, the wedding was going to happen. It was a warm summer day. Cody and the wedding guest were excited, but Jordan was sad and very emotional. As she walked down the aisle, she started crying, and instead of looking at Cody, she was looking at the ground. She was not happy crying. She was terrified. And when she finally got to the altar, she continued crying. She couldn't look at Cody in the eye. She held his hand. She always would look at the floor. The ceremony kept going. But after the ceremony, the newlyweds danced to a song composed by a friend with lyrics. Quote, You help me climb higher a better view. You're my safe place to fall. It was very clear that Jordan was not enjoying her day. She was dreading what was coming next. She even sent a text to her maid of honor. Quote, I should be happy and I'm just not. I just know he's gonna want to do stuff and I'm not really wanting to. I'm using the my period started spill tonight. I hope it works because if I'm forced to do something I am going to freak out I feel like it's my job to make him happy even if I am miserable and quote in the days after the wedding Jordan confessed that they still hadn't consummated the marriage. She told them she was too nervous and couldn't do it. While she spent time with her friends, she looked very sad. Cody also talked to his friend and said that even though they were married, there was 
is still no sex or even affection. A week after the wedding, Jordan sent a text to a friend. Jordan said, Oh well, I'm about to talk to him. The friend replied, I'll pray for you guys. To what Jordan replied, but dead serious, if you don't hear from me at all again tonight, something happened. And something did happen. Nine days after the wedding, Cody's friends and family became worried when he didn't show up for work. The last time he was sin, seen, he was with Jordan on Sunday at church. And somebody spotted them at their local Dairy Queen. When his friends spoke to Jordan, she seemed not worried about Cody. She was quite happy, happier than her friends had ever seen her. Jordan said Cody was out in the garage of their home that Sunday evening. And when she went to go get him, he was not there anymore. She also said that she saw a dark car with Washington plates driving away. Then she said she got a message from him saying he was going for a ride with some friends from out of town. Cody's friends knew he wouldn't just take off like that. So they called the police and reported him missing. The police wanted to talk to Jordan and she told the police the same story. According to her, Cody had gone out for a drive with some of his buddies. She said she had no idea where they went, but she assumed that maybe he took this friend's to Glacier Park. The police asked Jordan if they had a fight that night, and she said they didn't. Police question her friends, and only one of her friends had a conflicting story. She told this person that, in fact, they were fighting. Jordan told this person that. And she even said that Cody had a 
held Jordan down while they were arguing. And he grabbed his keys and scratched her. Now, during this time, friends and family showed up at Jordan's home to help look for Cody. However, she didn't seem interested in looking for him. She was frustrated that everyone was concerned about Cody, and she even removed her wedding ring and threw it across the room. The family and friends were shocked and confused. They wanted to help her find Cody, but she seemed not into it. Police were noticing that she was also changing the story. She would tell that story in a different way to different people. So not only the police, but also her friends were started to become suspicious. Then Jordan told her friends she got an email from someone that called himself, quote, Tony the Carmen. In this email, he tells her that Cody took him to Glacier National Park and that he accidentally fell off a cliff. Now, the email was very weird. Quote, Hello, Jordan. My name is Tony. There is no bother looking for Cody anymore. He's gone. End quote. Her friend thought it was weird. I mean, who doesn't? Why would this person send this email to the wife and not call the police? Her friends advised Jordan to show this email to the police. And the email was weird to the police as well. But even weirder was the fact that somebody told her her husband was dead and she still was looking perfectly happy. So... They were not buying the Tony story. The oddly worded email and this email put Jordan in the hot spot. At one point, She even seemed relieved by this letter. Four days later, or four days after Cody's disappearance, 
she gather her friends? Jordan did and told them she wanted them to help her look for Cody in Glacier National Park. If you don't know about Glacier National Park, it is not only beautiful, but it's also about a million acres of rugged mountain terrain. And to make things even harder, it has over seven hundred lakes. Now Jordan and her friends did go to the park, but Jordan seemed to be more in like vacation mode. She drove with her arm out of the window, playing with the breeze, singing along to the songs on the radio, and her friends at this point were just confused about her behavior. Her friends looked for Cody but Jordan was barely making an effort. Of course, with one day, they couldn't search much. But they headed home and came back the next day. Within minutes of entering the park, Jordan knew exactly where to go. She was insisting in this particular spot on a trail called the Loop Trail. Um, along this trail was a spot with a 300 foot cliff on the other side of a safety wall. Jordan was almost excited. She hopped over the safety wall, climbed down to the edge of the cliff, and looked at the bottom. She then yelled to her friends, he's down here, I can see him. So in a ginormous park with over 13,000 square miles, she just went to the spot and found him. Police arrived and found the body of Cody Johnson in the shallow water beneath a waterfall. He had a damaged, um, well, damage to his head and arms just to begin with. And was determined that he had fallen face first. His forehead had an eight inch gash and he was found without his wedding ring. When police asked Jordan how she found him, she said that the Holy Spirit led her there. She said that he had mentioned before that he wanted to visit that place before he died. So now Jordan, a widow, She quickly 
get used to that idea and was looking forward to the funeral so the cops could stay out of her life according to her by the time of Cody's funeral which was 16 days after the wedding everyone assumed and knew that Jordan was responsible for Cody's death she was the kind of person that wouldn't show emotion but this was the next level event when they were lowering him his friends and family were crying but Jordan was texting after the funeral the police brought Jordan back into the station for more questioning the FBI was involved at this point and they told her that she was under arrest for killing her husband Jordan as you can probably imagine was unmoved But when they showed the evidence that they had against her, she started to show emotion. Police had subpoenaed the, the cell phone companies of both her and Cody's. And it showed that they both enter Glacier National Park on that Sunday evening. They even got footage from a security camera showing them both entering the park in her car. They also were able to prove the email was actually composed by Jordan at her stepdad's home so she wrote it and emailed it to herself to try to hide the crime then she broke down she said that she regretted marrying him and she had overwhelming negative emotions she explained that they've been arguing the night of Cody's death but then decided to go to Glacier National Park and do the loop trail Out of the blue, Jordan claimed that Cody told her that he could wear a blindfold on the trail. She said she didn't want to do it because she was afraid he would fall. But he continued to say that he could do it with one with a blindfold this was a shock to them because police found a black piece of cloth near the body and they believed that it could have been used as a blindfold 
when they tested it, there were human hairs embedded in it. Because the cloth was handled improperly during the investigation, they were unable to prove it that she had used it as a blindfold. On top of that, on the Sunday before his disappearance, Cody's friends told police that he was in a good mood. Because Jordan told him she had a surprise for him. Cody and his friends all assumed the surprise was that they would finally have sex. So, the FBI agents concluded that Jordan brought Cody to the park and blindfolded him with the lure that he would finally be getting sex from his wife. Jordan explained that while on the loop trail, they hopped over the safety wall along the going to the sun road. Oh, well, that's not the smartest thing to do. And then, cli- and then climb down a steep, ro- rocky slope. They then made their way to the edge of a cliff with a massive drop below. She said that she was afraid for him falling. They were still arguing, and he went to grab my arm and my jacket, and I said no, let go, and I pushed, and then he went over. I, please, just couldn't believe this. She was confessing of pushing him to protect herself. She claimed this was an accident. She said she was frustrated, angry, and felt a lot of things at once. Later, in Questioning, Jordan told police that the two of them had been arguing not only on the trail but before. So, in the end, she admitted that in that fit of rage, she had shoved. Cody with both hands on his back, and that he fell 300 feet to his death. Then she left the park and went home. On the one hour drive home, she sent a text message to friends and family without mentioning this happening, and then she made up that story that he left with some friends. As you can probably tell, they had more than enough to charge her with first degree murder, second degree murder, and making misleading statements to the police. Now, she was facing a life sentence. A 
Initially, she pleaded not guilty, then changed her plea during the trial, just before the case was to be presented to the jury. She pleaded guilty to second-degree murder and was sentenced to 30 years in prison without the possibility of parole. She later claimed, quote, It was a moment of complete shock and panic. I have no other explanation. I kind of was feeling, should we have waited a little bit longer and then got married? I wasn't feeling, feeling like I was on cloud nine. Some people needed more than that. I mean, why would you marry somebody who you're not intending to do what married couples do? And I'm not only talking about sex, but I'm talking about, you know, having that connection, having that communication, and although not everyone is openly affectionate, This was coldness. This was like looking at two people that don't even know each other. Some other people questioned why Cody insisted in this wedding. They were both very, you know, he was handsome, she was a beautiful girl, well-looking people. Why would they put themselves in this situation? Well, Jordan didn't care to share the why why she didn't want to be married to him, why she said yes in the first place, or even why she didn't want to be intimate with him. Some people um, went a little bit deeper, claiming that she was probably not into guys, but because of her religious beliefs, she felt the pressure of putting up a front of what the church expected her to do or follow. I have to say that if I had to pick one of those options, I'd say that it is possible that that's true. I feel like some people don't feel safe to come out especially if they are deeply religious and they feel like there is a time where you have to settle down and do what you think the church is expecting you to do. I don't think you're in the right church 
see if you feel that way. And if you feel like you have to go to those extents faking the life that you think you're intended to live. It's not only sad, but also very confusing, frustrating, and I believe Jordan when she said to the police that she felt all those emotions at once. I believe she did. I feel like a lot of people hide their emotions for fear of being judged. And in the end, all the emotions come out and can end up in a bad situation. I am not saying that this is a bad situation um, because of uh, you know, what she did. I'm not. I don't think most people would do what she did. But I do think that you can do a lot of hurting for, to other people when you're hurting inside, when you have that many emotions going through your heart and mind. So yeah, maybe she wasn't interested in a relationship with a guy, but it was never proven she had a girlfriend or a love interest being another girl either, so I need to make that clear. Overall, I think sometimes we don't see the signs. In this case, for Cody, thinking she'd become affectionate once they got married, maybe thinking the church was stopping her from being that way. But marriage is not the solution for a problem. To me, it means a lot more of commitment. And do people choosing to be together, choosing to be there for one another? And I don't think, in this case, Jordan met the, made that choice. But something in her head made her believe that's what she needed to do. Let me know what you think about today's case. Do you think maybe mental illness is involved? Maybe she was a sociopath? Psychopath? Or is this somebody who is deeply confused? and made a terrible mistake. Thank you so much for being here today, guys. I truly appreciate your support. And I'd love to read you in the comments down below. I'll talk to you guys next time.